Oscar's release is an indication that we have a serious problem. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down notorious or well-known athletes who faced criminal charges during or after their careers. In court today, Leaf acknowledged that he has a drug problem. Number 10, Michael Vick. Vick is a former star NFL quarterback who rose to prominence as a dynamic player known for his remarkable athleticism. It was like having Barry Sanders back there as your quarterback. The most dynamic, athletic quarterback that there ever was. I'm gonna give him all this, baby. I'm gonna give him all that. However, in 2007, he became embroiled in a high-profile criminal case. Vic was implicated in a dogfighting operation named Bad News Kennels, leading to federal charges. The case exposed a shocking world of cruelty and illegal activities. Collective picture was a very bad one. There were tremendous concerns on my part about the severity of the crime, the effect on the animals, as well as the attitude of the individuals involved in this operation. In 2007, Vic pleaded guilty to federal charges that same year related to dogfighting, resulting in a prison sentence. He served 18 months in federal prison and faced financial repercussions, losing millions in salary and endorsements. First, I want to apologize um, you know, for all the things that, that I've done and that I've allowed to happen. So I will redeem myself. I have to. Thank you. Vic's case highlighted the intersection of professional sports, legal consequences, and ethical considerations, sparking discussions about the responsibilities of athletes as public figures. I felt the guilt, and I knew I was guilty, and I knew what I had done. And you know, not knowing at the time that, you know, actually telling the truth may have been better than, you know, not being honest. Number nine, Tanya Harding. I mean, what kind of friggin' person bashes in their friend's knee? Who would do that to a friend? This American figure skater infamously faced criminal charges related to the attack on her rival Nancy Kerrigan just before the 1994 Winter Olympics. Why? 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 Harding was charged with conspiracy to hinder the prosecution and pleaded guilty to the charge. The prosecution alleged that Harding was involved in a plot to hinder the investigation into the attack by covering up the involvement of, among others, her ex-husband Jeff Galuli. As part of her plea deal, Harding received three years of probation. Additionally, she agreed to withdraw from the 1994 U.S. Figure Skating Championships and relinquished her spot on the U.S. Olympic team. The guilty plea and the subsequent legal consequences marked the end of Tanya Harding's competitive figure skating career. I mean, she's moved on. I've moved on. It's part of history that will always be with us. Mm -hmm. But I'm also noted as the one and only American woman that did the first triple axel. Number 8. Boris Becker Becker was a German tennis legend who won six Grand Slam singles titles and two Davis Cups. In 1985, he was the youngest player to win the men's singles title at Wimbledon at the age of 17. Well, and how perfect. He wins the title again with the weapon that has stood him in such wonderful state throughout this championship. Becker retired from professional tennis in 1999 and then worked as a commentator and coach. In 2022, Becker was sentenced to two and a half years in prison for illicitly transferring large amounts of money and hiding assets after he was declared bankrupt. He must serve half of it before becoming eligible for release. He was convicted on four charges under the Insolvency Act and had faced a maximum sentence of seven years in prison. He was released from prison and deported from the UK in late 2022. So it's the key word is acceptance. You cannot look back. You know, what happened, the good and the bad, you can't change. I, uh, I'm learning from this experience. I like to think I'm a bit more mature. I like to think I make better choices now than I've done before. Sure. And, and I'm, I'm, it, it's a work in progress. Number seven, Aaron Hernandez. When this day began, Aaron Hernandez was a New England Patriots tight end. Tonight, he is the defendant in a murder case. Hernandez was a talented American football player who gained prominence as a tight end for the New England Patriots in the NFL. But his promising career was overshadowed by a series of criminal allegations. In 2013, he was arrested and charged with the murder of Odin Lloyd, a semi-professional football player and family acquaintance. Friends say the two men would often hang out sometimes even talk football. But prosecutors say something went wrong, shifting their bond from cordial to fatal. In 2015, 
he was found guilty of first-degree murder in the Odin Lloyd case and received a life sentence without the possibility of parole. Hernandez was later found dead in his prison cell on April 19, 2017. A sad and surprising twist in a once promising young life that went horribly awry. Number six, Mike Danton. Mike Danton was a Canadian hockey player for the St. Louis Blues in the NHL. In 2004, however, he was arrested and charged with conspiracy to commit murder. Danton had allegedly hired a hitman, who turned out to be an undercover police officer, to kill his agent, David Frost. How, how did you go about to find a hitman? Uh, you know, I, I don't really want to get into the details Craig's of the crime. That, but, yeah, Facebook, you know. Yeah. The motives behind the plot still remain murky, with much speculation ranging from financial disputes to personal issues. In 2004, Danton pleaded guilty to the charges and was sentenced to seven and a half years in prison. With its overtones of systemic mistreatment starting in junior hockey, the case shocked the hockey community, and Danton's criminal conviction marked a tragic downfall for a promising athlete. Number five, Ryan Leaf. With the uh, second choice in the draft, the San Diego Chargers select quarterback, Washington State University, Brian Leaf. Leaf was a highly touted American football quarterback, selected as the second overall pick in the 1998 NFL draft by the San Diego Chargers. However, Leaf's short NFL career was plagued by poor performance and off field issues. Don't talk to me, all right? Knock it off! Much later, in 2012, he faced serious legal consequences. Leaf was arrested and charged with burglary, theft, and possession in Montana. Leaf was freed on $76,000 bond and is scheduled to make an initial court appearance Monday. In 2014, he pleaded guilty to felony burglary and criminal possession of dangerous substances. Leaf's personal struggles and legal troubles serve as a cautionary tale about the challenges faced by young athletes in the spotlight. But money changes people. Bottom line, it's where we start. Money changed me. I didn't think it would. It changed me. It made me think I was more important. Uh, also that I'd reached my goal. Number four, Ray Lewis. The saddest thing in the world, in the world, is to be falsely accused. That hurts. Unlike Ryan Leaf, Lewis became a megastar, a two-time Super Bowl champion and 13-time Pro Bowler. He's considered one of the greatest linebackers in NFL history. Despite his on-field success, his career was marred by scandal. In 2000, Lewis faced criminal charges following a brawl in Atlanta that resulted in two deaths. Where's the white suit that he was wearing that night? It went to the cleaners and was in the suits that were in his closet. The prosecution didn't do the things they needed to do to get access to the suit. So it exists somewhere? Well, I don't know that it exists now. Lewis eventually pleaded guilty to obstruction of justice, a misdemeanor, and testified against his co-defendants. He received a year of probation and a fine from the NFL. Lewis rebounded from the controversy, retiring in 2013 as a beloved figure in football. But his legal entanglements remain a significant part of his complex legacy. And if I had to go through that to be sitting right here, then so be it. Number three, Reuben Carter. Nicknamed Hurricane, Carter was a charismatic and talented middleweight boxer. But in 1967, he and a co-defendant were convicted of a triple homicide in Patterson, New Jersey. The case garnered widespread attention due to allegations of racial bias and misconduct. An all-white jury convicted them, and the two men were each given triple life sentences. The verdict opened up accusations of racism, and many leading public figures, including Muhammad Ali, led protests against the convictions. Despite maintaining his innocence, Carter spent nearly 20 years in prison before his conviction was overturned in 1985. His exoneration came after years of legal battles and advocacy, highlighting the flaws in the criminal justice system and the enduring impact of racial prejudice on the lives of those wrongly accused. That's not being mean. That's having the survival instinct, the instinct to survive. But that's and how everybody read it. That's what everybody saw. I don't care what people saw. The thing that they didn't see and they couldn't have seen was trying to survive this brick and mortar. 
Reuben Carter's story became a symbol of the fight for justice and the resilience of the human spirit in the face of systemic injustice. I remember telling them when they make a list of the greatest boxers of the 20th century, I said, I don't think they're going to talk about you, I said, but if they make a list of the greatest fighters of the 20th century, you're going to be at the top of the list. Number two, Oscar Pistorius. This South African Paralympic and Olympic athlete made history as the Blade Runner due to his prosthetic legs. A disabled person running with able-bodied athletes on the biggest stage in the world, incredible. Oscar is really big in global terms. Superstar Oscar Pistorius! His inspirational journey culminated in participation in the 2012 London Olympics. However, tragedy struck in 2013 when Pistorius was charged with the murder of his girlfriend, Riva Steenkamp, in their home. During his trial, Pistorius claimed he mistook her for an intruder. He's effectively admitting he shot an innocent person. That puts you in a tough spot legally. So I've got to believe that his best hope is for a lesser charge rather than an all-out not guilty verdict. Despite this defense, he was found guilty of culpable homicide in 2014. And the conviction was later upgraded to murder on appeal. The accused has punished himself and will punish himself for the rest of his life far more than any court of law can punish him. His prison sentence was later increased to 13 years and five months. The case captivated global attention, raising questions about fame, domestic violence, and the legal consequences for high-profile individuals. He was released on parole in early 2024. He'll live under conditions until his sentence expires in 2029. Those conditions will include not speaking to the media, and attending mandatory classes on anger management and violence against women. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, O.J. Simpson. It was almost like an out-of-body experience. I had a, a feeling of numbness. Did this really happen? The 90s were the era of the O.J. trial. Simpson played college football at the University of Southern California before achieving NFL stardom with the Buffalo Bills. He became the first player to rush for over 2,000 yards in a single season in 1973. He later transitioned to acting and gained popularity in films like the Naked Gun series. Arnold James Simpson had that shine. The sun hit him and there was this thing about him because he really was that great. In 1994, Simpson was accused of murdering his ex-wife, Nicole Brown Simpson, and her friend, Ron Goldman. The ensuing trial, known as the Trial of the Century, captivated the nation. We, the jury, in the above entitled action, find the defendant, Orenthal James Simpson, not guilty of the crime of murder in violation of Penal Code Section 187. Simpson was acquitted in 1995, a decision that sparked widespread controversy and debates about celebrity influence and the criminal justice system. Simpson's life post-acquittal has been marked by further legal troubles and public scrutiny. Which professional athlete disillusioned you the most with their actions? Let us know in the comments. After spending his life overcoming adversity on and off the track, the sporting icon's glittering career is tarnished forever.